Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Whole Home Show. I'm Tony Joe, your host here every week, bringing you tips, education, and updates on home-related matters. Whether you're in the real estate market or if you're looking for other ideas, things to do around your home, this is a great place to be. Our show comes to you every week with the support of our show partners, Denise Webster, mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group, J.P. Sellas, insurance advisor at Westland Insurance, the Sitka Law Group for your real estate, wills and estates, corporate and personal injury needs, and Shoreline Inspections with Reese Jacob and Monica Gass. If you need help or direction in your real estate transaction, give any of the whole Home Show team members a call. They would love to hear from you. I'm your host here every week. I've been selling real estate here in Greater Victoria since 1991. I've handled a few hundred more like 2,500 transactions in our fair city. I'm proud to be ranked as one of the top REMAX agents in Western Canada. And I would be pleased to help you as well too. You can find me and the rest of our whole Home Show team members' uh, contact information on the website. Visit cfax1070.com, look under Shows. There you'll find us, the whole Home Show with me, Tony Joe. All of our contact information is there. We would love to hear from you. We're still all being cautious with the looming specter of COVID-19 in the background. Until a vaccine is found, there's still a lot of concern for health, as there should be, not only for ourselves, but for others. In real estate, we're taking precautions, or at least we should be taking precautions, including things like wearing masks and gloves, also limiting showings or viewings to those who are really and truly qualified to look at homes, not just tire kickers or looky-loos. And also, virtual online open houses are a great way to showcase homes. It's amazing how many people are buying homes from out of Victoria by looking at them virtually without actually having a step foot in them. That's what's going on out there right now. But what about our senior population, something that Victoria is well known for? Today, I have several guests, all members of the Victoria Senior Business Network, the BSBN, we're here to talk with you about what they're experiencing, how their clients are faring, and maybe even thoughts about days ahead. We always have uh, our start of our episodes with a listener story or question. And if you have something that you'd like to tell us, give us a call. The number is 250-414-6540, 250-414-6540. Please do leave a message. Tell us your story. Leave us your name as well, too. Uh, or, of course, you can find us online, again, cfax1070.com. Uh, send us a message, and we'll discuss it on the air. Don't have so much of a story today, uh, so much as I wanted to touch base with you about the real estate market. Because, of course, news came out first week of July about our stats for the month of June. And for many, it was quite remarkable, uh, including myself. I got to say, uh, really, really surprised. I shouldn't say I was surprised because, of course, I'm in the thick of it. So I see people on a regular basis. Uh, my team and I help people buy and sell on a regular basis. We knew it was going to be busy. Had no idea it was going to be this busy. So uh, I'll throw a couple of quick numbers out here for you. We ended up with 808 sales in the month of June. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're up 9.2% from June 2019. And let's remember, we didn't have a global pandemic in June 2019. So how the heck did our market become strong when we're having to overcome all of these things out there uh, on a global standpoint? Sales are up 9.2%. That's number of sales, by the way, uh, 808, by the way. Um, prices, for the first time ever, the average price for a single family home in Greater Victoria exceeded a million dollars. So it came in at a million 14,746. That shows as a 17% increase from last June. Um, now, I need to warn you about this. This is an average. The thing about an average is it can be skewed by the amount of higher end properties that sell in a given month or the lack of lower end properties. Uh, I can tell you this. I was doing some study during the week and uh, there were 26 houses that sold over $2 million in Greater Victoria for the month of June 2020. That's high because in June 2019, there were 12. 
So we almost doubled the amount of higher end properties that sold. That's the reason why we're over a million dollars right now. It doesn't mean that your house has overnight or in a month increased 17%. Not at all. In fact, what we do is we have a look at our house price index, the HPI. That is something that we do at the real estate board. And what the HPI is, is it's, a, um, it's an affectation of a sample house. So you think, think, picture a sample house and what it sells for today versus what it sold for six months ago or six years ago. Uh, so it's an index that is created. The HPI, the house price index for single family homes in greater Victoria, uh, it did go up, right? It went up, not 17%, it went up 4.6%. And some would say that that's a much more accurate figure because again, it is not affected by the number of higher end properties that sell in a given month. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, prices are up. We're up 4%. Um, now, how can prices go up? How can sales uh, uh, be strong? It's because of inventory and lack thereof. So we ended up with 2,698 active listings in the month of June. That's down 11% from June of 2019. It's still really low because if we look at the last 30 years and I look at the stats, typically in June, we have 3,800, 4,000, 4,400, 4,800, even 51, 5,200 active listings. So we are somewhere between uh, 30 to 50% less inventory right now that, as we normally would. Now, now, where are these people coming from? Because I'll tell you this, they're not foreign buyers. You guys know the borders are closed, so we don't have foreign investors coming and snapping up properties. Uh, if ever there was a time, a demonstration of the foreigners as a scapegoat, I'm going to say it is now because all we have is, number one, local buyers buying or selling. We are seeing a lot more people from the east. So I myself, I've had clients from Toronto, from Ottawa. We've also had lower mainland, so Vancouver, uh, the Vancouver area they have decided that Victoria is the place they want to come to. Now, I can give you some examples. I have clients who um, spoke to me months ago. They had decided they're going to retire to Victoria in two years. Well, guess what? During coronavirus, they have been self-isolating at home. They realize they don't need all the amenities that Toronto has to offer. In fact, they want a quieter pace. They want a slower pace. Um, and we've got this whole benefit of safety because, let's face it, British Columbia, specifically Vancouver Island and Victoria, are really the safest places in Canada right now as far as coronavirus is concerned. So uh, these folks that they wanted to move in two years, they decided to pack their bags and they're moving over now and they're going to be here next month. So they hasten their plans to move here. Um, so many more examples like that. So that's who we have right now. We've got people who are migrating to the promised land and that's what Victoria is. The biggest problem that we have, ladies and gentlemen, is not curbing that demand. We can tell those Torontonians or Ottawa folk not to come here. Do you think that's going to happen? They're Canadians. They're fellow Canadians. Oh, by the way, many of them are people who lived here before and past, even people that were from Victoria that are just coming back. What we really need is more inventory. We need not only new stock as far as new homes, new condos, new townhouses, but just inventory because as long as the inventory remains low as it is right now, there is going to be upward pressure on prices and it is going to continue going. So that's my little story about what happened in the month of June 2020. Can you believe that? We're, we're dealing with COVID-19 right now. People should not be looking at homes or selling their homes and introducing strangers into their house that they have no idea about their health. By the way, the real estate community does what they can, uh, asking for declarations, uh, health declarations, masks, gloves, things like that. But even still, during this time, unprecedented, never seen before in the history of the world, people are buying and selling real estate and the Victoria market is very, very strong. That's what's going on. If you have any questions about the market, you want to talk about real estate, I am here for you, by the way. You can find me, look up primeteam.ca, primeteam.ca, my real estate team. Happy to help you out. By the way, as always, if you're a podcast listener and you want to hear this uh, on your smartphone or in your car, uh, you can find us on iTunes or Google Play. And because we're doing these episodes by Zoom, we are videoing them. So if you want to see my guests uh, today or for the past few weeks, just find us 
on YouTube or on Facebook. It's the Prime Real Estate Team. We're going to be coming back after our break here, visiting with members of the Victoria Senior Business Network. We're going to be talking about seniors handling coronavirus. Back in just a moment. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. Today, we are talking about living under coronavirus time, and especially those in our community uh, who are seniors. Um, and we're all concerned about health. We all should be. Uh, but in particular, of course, the biggest concerns we've been hearing about have been seniors in other jurisdictions, other marketplaces. We are very fortunate here in Victoria. And with us today, I have members of the Victoria Seniors Business Network. Now, uh, if you are a regular listener, you will already have met uh, all of these guys. We've had them as guests before, uh, either individually or talking about the events that we put on. Uh, I'm a member myself, a proud member of ESPN and one of the uh, originals. Um, but what's really interesting right now is unlike normal where we might have one or two guests at a time, I have four guests here. And that's one of the neat things about doing this by Zoom meeting because I'm looking at all the ladies right now. And by the way, uh, if you'd like to watch this episode, I am going to post it on our Facebook page and on YouTube. Just look at the uh, Prime Real Estate team. Um, so I'm just going to go through the list of who we have with us here uh, looking at my screen, top left. First of all, Anne Duggan. Uh, Ann Duggan has a background as a advocate and advisor for seniors, um, not actively working right now, but you, you sure have a lot of history and a lot of background in this. Uh, Anne, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, all, great. And below Anne, on my screen anyways, we've got Renee from uh, Oak Bay uh, Volunteer Services. Uh, Renee, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, and then we have our two ladies from uh, the Parkwood. So first, Jackie McAfee is with Parkwood Court, uh, which is across the street. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Tony. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, and uh, across the street on Shelbourne is Parkwood Place, and we have Kathy uh, Aegis. Kathy, how are you? I'm well. Thanks, Tony. Good morning. Great. Great. Well, listen, let's, uh, let's start by talking about what's happening at Parkwood, in particular, uh, Kathy, at Parkwood Place. Um, because, you know, we've been hearing all about um, uh, troubles at seniors' residences in other places, even in Abbotsford. We're so lucky here, right? Pardon, Tony? We're so lucky here in Victoria. We are so fortunate on the island in Victoria, in BC. Absolutely. Yeah. How are your residents doing though? Because things aren't normal. Like it's not like, uh, like what are the changes that Parkwood uh, Place has had to implement during uh, COVID time? Well, initially, Tony, very early on, uh, we set standards, uh, Riviera did across the country, uh, no outside visitors. Um, that was a really important part. Uh, even though it was difficult for family members, it kept our residents safe. Yeah. Um, our recreation programs have continued, minimal numbers. We started off with four, um, four residents per session. So a huge number of, of activities throughout the day. So everybody still gets to be busy um, yeah. and have always been able to go for walks. You know, outside, um, we often suggested early on wearing a mask uh -huh. um, and our residents often do that too. So. Well, I mean, it's very nice that uh, uh, Parkwood Place has got, you can walk around the building and not only that, but actually a great location because you've got, you've got a field right behind you, Lansdowne uh, um, uh, Middle School and, and, uh, and things like that, right? Absolutely. It's a great walking area. Yeah. Yeah. How about, uh, how about meals? Because um, for a time, people were getting served in their, in their rooms, right? They were, yeah. Early on as well, Tony, we started serving all three meals in uh, resident suites. Mm -hmm. So big, big changeover for, for everybody, but it was managed quite well. And um, I'd say about three weeks now, we've been back in the dining room for lunch and dinner. Breakfast mm -hmm. is still being served in the suites, but lunch yeah. and dinner, we have three servings per meal. Yeah, and so and guests and family still are not uh, are not coming in, right? That's correct. Outside visits. Yeah. Uh, so we have the gazebo and an area in um, front of our our property where uh, family members can schedule visits. Family members and friends uh, can schedule visits with their loved ones that are living here. Yeah, and that's how we're staying safe here, right? That's how we're staying safe. 
Yeah, across the street at uh, Parkwood Court, uh, Jackie. So uh, similar situation. Actually, first of all, uh, explain the difference to our listeners between Parkwood uh, Court and Parkwood Place, across the street from each other. Parkwood Court is complex care, yeah. and Parkwood Place is independent living. Mm -hmm. So we provide the 24-hour care with our registered nurses, our LPNs, and our PCAs. And we also have in-house doctors here. So there's only been one of the four doctors have been coming in to uh, check on our residents. Um, we did a lockdown right at the beginning, um, the same as Kathy. We're all wearing masks. Everybody gets uh, their temperature checked twice a day, even the residents. Yeah. And we're so happy to say that we are COVID free up to now we have been because we did what we did. And we're also doing the virtual tours and at our front front entrance, we've got some lawn chairs there fixed up so the families can come to the window. We've got a phone set up yeah. and they can still see them and it's been working really, really well. Well, and you've also got that courtyard in the back of the building too. That's just for residents, right? Just right for now. residents, yeah. right? Yeah, we've, uh, we haven't opened that up yet, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, virtual tours too. So like what we're doing in real estate, uh, you guys are having to Absolutely. do this at the uh, residence. Absolutely. Our recreation uh, team have just been amazing, stepped up. They scheduled the virtual visits with their loved ones and uh, it's been going really well, either virtual or telephone calls. Fantastic. Um, let's shift, for, shift over to Renee at uh, Oak Bay Volunteer Services. Now, this has been a big change for, for you guys, right? Yes, well, all of our services are delivered, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. We're direct services to help people continue to live independently in their homes. And a lot of that is really that personal connection between our volunteers and our clients. And through all of this, we had to absolutely pull back our services for everybody's safety and reevaluate what, uh, what were the imperatives right now? What did we need to continue to provide or create something innovatively to continue to provide that service? Um, at this point, you know, we're thankful that we've moved into the next phases where while we can't do still a lot of in-person visits in people's homes, we're coming up with other ways to be able to connect with folks going for walks in the community. So we have distancing. Um, another great program we've now participated in is the meal delivery program. We're oh. finding that folks are really yearning for the connections and while some have been really supported by family and friends we work with a lot of folks who live completely alone in their homes and sometimes their family members are far away in Ontario or other places or maybe are no longer living so they're really yearning so we're happy to have little opportunities here through the walks the visits through the phone calls that we're doing now versus the visits in person the meal delivery where it might be brief um, also our shopping a delivery service that we offer now where we pick up groceries and medication oh. for folks again is another it might be a brief connection but we've had some really beautiful stories come up between the connections that have developed between the volunteers and the clients even when we're just bringing them food and those necessities that they're looking for. So it's been a real challenge, but a really innovative time for our agency to step forward and to lead in a way that is new and, and bringing people what they need right now. Also with the, you know, on the horizon that we might have to pull back services if there's a challenge in the future and COVID starts ramping up in our community. So we're always kind of in touch of, of what the needs are of the, the, the clients themselves but also what, what are the health office there and, and uh, the ministry saying that we need to do to make sure we keep that. Now, I, I mean, a lot of your volunteers at Oak Bay Volunteer Services are also seniors as well, right? Yes, and that was another challenge we faced where, uh, you know, because majority of our seniors are retirees in the community of Oak Bay and of course have their own health and age-related huh. vulnerabilities to something like this kind of virus uh, and have had to pull back, you know, doing something they absolutely love we are so thankful though, we've just seen a, just a, a rush of volunteers coming through. We've been able to maintain our services, thankfully, uh, through the, the hands of newer uh, volunteers. Some of them are actually young professionals who maybe lost their job. Now we're working from home oh, even. Of course, um, of course. So that's been really interesting to see uh, the sort of next generations coming through because it's always been the retirees who have a lot of the time to take people to medical appointments. And we still do that service, but again, we've lost those 
those drivers. And thankfully we've had other folks pop forward to say, I would like to be, you know, support people in, in my neighborhood, in my community. So we're so thankful for that. Fantastic. Well, listen, we need to take a, a quick break here. Didn't get a chance to get to Anne this uh, segment, but we will in the next. We're talking with members of Victoria Seniors uh, Business Network. Uh, we all uh, serve the needs of seniors. And the curiosity that I wanted to highlight today, of course, is how we are surviving under coronavirus time. So we'll take a quick break. Back in just a moment. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. Our show comes to you with the support of our show partners, Denise Webster, mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group, J.P. Sellas, insurance advisor at Westland Insurance, the Sitka Law Group for your real estate, wills and estates, corporate and personal injury needs, and Shoreline Inspections with Reese Jacob and Monica Gass. If you need help, or direction in your real estate transaction, give any of the home, the whole Home Show team members a call. We would love to hear from you. We're chatting today about dealing under coronavirus time, uh, specifically as a senior in the community of Greater Victoria here. Our guests today are all members of the Victoria Seniors Senior Business Network. This is a group that was started several years ago, and the focus of the group is to have a collaboration of service providers, professionally locally here in Greater Victoria, who specialize in the needs of helping seniors. Now, I happen to be the real estate person. I'm one of the original members of the group. Uh, we have other members uh, who aren't with us today, but as an example, we have Brecken Gage, who is actually the founder of the group. He uh, runs Comfort Keepers in-home seniors care. We also have, um, uh, Pam Katnar, uh, financial advisor at Raymond James. Uh, Gurpreet Randawa, who of course is a, a show sponsor here at The Whole Home Show. Uh, she's the lawyer of the group. We have Terry Louie at Motion Specialties. Uh, Farhan Kanji from uh, Heart Pharmacy. Uh, it's a fantastic group and we get together every two weeks, including the ladies who are with us today. Uh, and as a reminder, we have from Parkwood Court, we have Jackie McAfee. We have uh, uh, Kathy Aegis from uh, Parkwood Place. Um, Renee, um, oh, Renee, I always get your last name. It's a long one. <laughs> Renee Lorme Goldbranson. L Lorme hyphen Goldbranson. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, with Oak Bay Volunteer Services. Uh, and um, uh, also a, a person with tons of background uh, in uh, seniors advising is uh, Ann Duggan. Um, so it's a fantastic group, and I have uh, with us, um, uh, again, Renee, uh, Ann, uh, Kathy, and uh, Jackie today talking about things. Um, I want to just follow up with Renee, though, because we were talking about OPA volunteer services and how a lot of the uh, volunteers are seniors, and of course, they're cutting back because of, you know, concerns about their health as they should, right? Um, now, you said that you, you also have some younger volunteers that have stepped up because they're not currently working, right? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're finding not only, of course, students uh, are off right now or, you know, sort of pondering summer and what's that going to look Got like it. for them. Yeah. Um, but we definitely have folks who, uh, at, you know, at one point in time, for sure had regular jobs, unfortunately lost them through all this. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they have time and, and, you know, the passion, thankfully, to to connect with the community. And then the other folks are, are for sure the ones who, you know, have jobs. Now we're working from home. So there's some really interesting flexibility now in their schedules. Oh, yeah. uh, and so they've been offering more time and, and uh, services to, to the community, not only with our agency, of course, there's many other nonprofits doing the work um, and serving, you know, seniors particularly uh, with throughout Greater Victoria right now. Funny that you mentioned that, you know, because I was thinking about that this weekend. I, because the way we conduct business has changed quite a bit, I have found that I have more spare time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is yeah. one, of the, one of these byproducts of what, what we're going through, right? Yes, I mean, we're, we're saving all the commuting that yep. everybody normally does, uh, you know, those, <laughs> the, the hour lunches and the lunch meetings and, you know, a lot of things have moved, uh, obviously, in this sort of platform and on a Zoom call. And, and so the flexibility is there. Some of them have for sure now taken on the role of, you know, taking care of their children at the same time. 
but still we're finding people able and, and willing to come forward in support of the, the activities and services that we're doing in the community. For sure. I mean, as an example, so actually the, all of us who are here today are also members of the Victoria um, uh, B4B group, the, uh, another group we meet on Wednesdays, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and since we've been doing our meetings virtually online ever since the beginning of uh, COVID-19, I mean, for me, it's the time saving of going down and having our meeting and then, you know, going to the next, uh, the travel time. I f sometimes I feel sad because the car doesn't get used as much as it did before. <laughs> no, saving gas for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Anne, uh, Anne Duggan, um, again, you, you've got such a background. You, you, you are, you're actually kind of retired now, right? So you're, you're, uh, although you are a wealth of knowledge still, I, I'm curious to know your thoughts about how people are coping right now and handling uh, under coronavirus times. Well, Tony, I think a lot of these older people um, have been through a tremendous number of things in their life that caught them by surprise. But to my knowledge, nothing has quite had the impact that this has. It came suddenly to them. And as we look around, uh, although I'm not actively out in the community at all anymore, I hear from a lot of people still. And uh, there were so many people caught with plans either to downsize and move or on waiting lists for beds in care or transitioning from one level of care to another. And suddenly their world stopped. And so there are a lot of people left in limbo and uh, it's been really hard on families and on the individuals themselves. So um, as part of that sort of community now, um, because I do live in independent living now and I moved on the day that the doors were closed. <laughs> and, uh, so I went to quarantine like everybody else and uh, um, it wasn't very hard for me because I'm an independent person who has lived alone anyway, but I observe around me here um, people who are very uncomfortable. They're, they have adjusted, They've, they're doing their best because that's what they do, they do their best, but they're, um, they're fed up with it now, you know, <laughs> like they want, want their old life back and it's very hard. So we're all getting through that and uh, all supported very well with um, activities in the community and in, in the facilities. I think nobody's um, complaining that uh, nobody's helping them, but it, it always strikes me as uh, an irony that um, we've always talked about what seniors need and we hadn't realized, I think, until this, that what they need is company. Loneliness is having a much greater impact than I expected it. I mean, I know from my professional work and my reading that socialization and all of that is quote unquote important. Um, I now observe how important it really is. People, even if they're not as isolated as they feel they are, um, it has the same, it's a perception of isolation and a perception that they can't reach out to uh, what they've always known. Yeah. So. Life goes on. Uh, there's nothing anybody can really do to change that right now. And for many of them, um, their lives are going on. They've had to deal with, I know, two or three people in my own personal circle of friends who had properties either for sale or have had to sell them or have, you know, have all their belongings um, sold off or something in the And that's hard enough. That's a hard enough process to go through without this, right? It's a major impact in everybody's life anyway when that happens yeah. and to do it at a distance and over the phone and all of that. Um, it's created all sorts of things we hadn't really anticipated, I think, in the, in the fallout from, from COVID and it's quite far reaching. Yeah. So I'm I'm impressed with uh, how this generation is doing um, through it. I think uh, just they're calling on some inner resources here. And uh, well, I you know, we've, we've always known this generation is resilient, right? <laughs> right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Resilient. My, I, I spoke with my neighbor some time ago because we were uh, offering to drop off groceries and stuff. And, and I said, are you doing okay? And she's like, hey, listen, 
I grew up in the war. That's right. Right. That's right. Uh, and I'm like, Ooh, okay. I yeah. get it. I get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's uh, I was speaking to a woman from um, uh, Norway who um, had been a teenager and training for the Olympics had the second world war broke overnight yeah. on them, they became imprisoned in their own home for five years. Five years. Couldn't oh, go down the street. Oh, goodness. So, well, listen, uh, we need to take they a... Know. You know, <laughs> they know, and we're, doing, we're all doing fine because of it. <laughs> we're doing okay. Well, listen, need to take another break, but we're here chatting with uh, the gang from the Victoria Senior Business Network. Uh, we need to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. We're having a conversation today about seniors here in Greater Victoria living under coronavirus times. I have members of the Victoria Senior Business Network with me. I am one of the members. I'm the real estate agent. Uh, we have with us today uh, Ann Duggan, uh, who is a seniors advocate, actually not an active duty right now, but with lots and lots of um, uh, background. We've got Renee Lormay Goldbranson at the Oak Bay uh, Volunteer Services. And also from Parkwood, uh, Parkwood Place, we have Kathy Aegis. And uh, at Parkwood Court, Jackie McAvee, thank you all uh, ladies for, for joining us today. Hey, listen, I just wanna maybe take a moment here and uh, uh, let the listeners know, Tell tell them about your experience being part of this network, the, the Victoria Senior Business Network. I find this, um, I've yeah, been part yeah. of the group, I think for six years now. And yeah. I find um, I find the group to be knowledgeable, professional. And um, if we have a question, there's always an answer. It seems to be within the group. Um, it's a close-knit group. We've had new members uh, and some from the very beginning. Um, I find it very, very valuable. It's, it's, fa it's fantastic. I echo that because, you know, there's nothing like knowing who to talk to when a question arises, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Renee, <laughs> at Oak Bay Volunteer Services? Yeah. So I've been a part of the group, oh my goodness, maybe a year, year and a half now. So I'm the new one on the block. It, it has been invaluable. I mean, and particularly, I actually have to say, during the pandemic, I, I ha really was able to reach out to the network uh, and, and just to do something as simple as find PPE for my volunteers. Oh, yeah. We are not part of any sort of supply chain where we'd have access to that as a charitable nonprofit. It's a real challenge. And of course, affordability for us too. And that even alone has been so valuable for our organization because you know I was able to not only get um, uh, masks and hand sanitizer and just information about what other agencies are doing and also even informing our all own policies and procedures with regards to a viral outbreak. I reached out to members of the, the, uh, the network and the, it was wonderful, really supportive, really knowledgeable people. Uh, I, I I'm so you know proud to be a part of this group. It's been really, really fun. Well, I mean, one member uh, who unfortunately can't make it today because he's got meetings. Again, the founder, Brecken, Brecken Gage at uh, Comfort Keepers. I mean, um, I, I remember at the very beginning, I said to him, I said, Brecken, what, you know, what changes are you making uh, for, uh, for health for your clients and stuff? And, and he said, actually, we always practice Yes. Um, uh, uh, healthy protocols and everything. So there's really no, really no change, right? Yeah, and that's he's the one I went to specifically were around the policies and procedures because yeah. I knew they must have had something in place this whole time, and so it was wonderful, really, really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Anne? How I mean, you've been here also uh, pretty well from the very beginning. Yes, uh, VS VSBN is a very special group. I mean, you can imagine how many organizations and businesses I've lived in <laughs> to over my career. And uh, the very special thing about this one is that there are people who are committed to raise the quality of care uh, for seniors. Uh, everybody holds the same philosophy and everybody works for the betterment of uh, our older population and and they stick to it it's very interesting to me because uh, it's called a business network and it is a business network they've these folks have referred a lot of work to me over the years i've been with them and uh, 
but it's a business group with a huge heart and it really shows and it's such a pleasure to, to know them and work with them. I've enjoyed it all, made some very good friends through this group. Well, for sure, for sure. And Jackie, you too, because you, you, you're always here. I am. Um, arrived here three years ago from Saskatchewan, and yep. this first group that I was invited to, and I, I love the group. Great support, great professionalism. Um, the main focus is our seniors, which is so, so important. Um, it, it is a close group, and there is good friendship within this group, and I like their focus, where they're going, and um, yeah, I have to say it's one of the, the best groups I've been <laughs> with, along with B for B. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, and so the other thing, we, we had an event, the VSBN had an event uh, some time ago where we had a, a dementia um, uh, uh, consultant. We also had CFAX's own Alan Perry uh, as a speaker too, and we filled a room. We had, uh, how many, we had just like 100 people in the room, and it was yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. So, you know, that's something else I think as a group we're going to need to get back to once all of this uh, COVID-19 is out of the way. Because, you know, stepping back to what uh, Anne was talking about, the, this whole notion of um, company and, um, you know, human interaction, that's really what's been missing here, right? Because, Renee, you used the word yearning. Like, people were yearning for, you know, their their contact and everything and then and Kathy you talked about um you know people missing family that's this is really the hardest mm -hmm. thing right now isn't it it is yeah yeah depression is a major issue and uh -huh. and not just amongst the elderly depression is showing up in children and teenagers um the whole community but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's more obvious i think to us in certain populations but it is going to be an ongoing issue for a couple of years, at least, once this all dies down. There's residual damage. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's going to take a lot of new way of thinking about things and new ideas to get people back in touch. And the working from home thing for people is, is great in so many ways. And on in, all manner of ways it's a positive thing and a negative thing it takes people right out away from their colleagues and their conversations that go on uh, over business the water cooler <laughs> but you know that whole where ideas develop and so on I mean if you it's another form of it's another form of isolation to be home all the time so we've got to rethink a lot of stuff now mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I echo Anne. I, I really feel there's going to be residual after this. Oh, yeah. We we have definitely been speaking to seniors who yeah. feel that um, their their challenges have become um, exacerbated through all of this. We had I have volunteers calling to do check ins right now, and clients saying, you know, I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling alone. Yeah. Um, I feel like my dementia has been progressing or my memory loss has been progressing. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, even when we start going back to having, you know, direct connections in person, there's, unfortunately, I feel like we're all of our, a lot of our clients are already going to be experiencing so much more than we would have anticipated them, you know, and, and that will be maybe a challenge for practitioners, volunteers that are working with seniors going forward. We're going to have to think about the sort of next wave of challenges once the pandemic's over. I think the spontaneity of everybody's life is missing. They can't just do things at the drop of a hat. Everything has to be planned and scheduled and organized. So you just can't, you know, leave off and do something fun. And I think that's right through the whole society. It's something we have to think about. So here's here's a question for all of you individually. What, knowing now what we know about the fact that it is not necessarily good to be, uh, you know, not necessarily quarantine, but even just at home and without that social interaction, without that spontaneity. Um, what what are things that people can do to to kind of um, fulfill that need that uh, that we have? Well, I, I, I believe that keeping in touch via, you know, whether it's Skype or FaceTime, the phone calls, uh, Tony is really, really important for, for everybody, not just for seniors, but, um, but for all of us. You know, some of us have lost our workplace cohorts. 
Um, we've lost connection with our families on a face-to-face -face basis. And I believe, however, we can, we can continue to have some socialization in our lives. We need to do that. Okay. So maybe from that, uh, what I take from that, uh, Kathy, is uh, listeners, please uh, have a conversation. Skype, FaceTime, uh, Zoom, a loved one, even not even a loved one, just somebody you know, right? <laughs> maybe need some social interaction and just say, hey, I've been thinking about you. Absolutely. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about you, um, Jackie? Just reaching out to people. Um, I know personally, it, it's just like everything stopped. And I know how I felt. And, you know, the families here at Parkwood Court not being able to hold their loved ones, you know, so we tried to do the best that we could under the circumstances and also at Parkwood Place. And, and um, it, it's the communication. Please keep that up, you know, pick up the phone, phone somebody you haven't spoken to for a long time, check on your neighbors. I check on my two 90 year old neighbors taking baking to them and that. And it's just, it's just so that they see somebody. It's, it's the communication and show your love. So I, I missed a uh, FaceTime call or a call last week. And what it was, it was my cousin. I was on a call, so I couldn't answer it. But my cousin had uh, FaceTimed our aunt who was in a retirement um, home. And what she was doing is she was um, contacting all of my relatives and friends and yeah. having this sort of joint. And, oh, it's Tony's time. But I didn't answer. I didn't know, you know, had oh, it been cool. planned. I, I would have been there, but I'm like, that's cool. You know, being able to, yeah. you know, cause could you imagine if this happened when we didn't have this technology? Yeah. Can't imagine. Yeah. Because I, cause I'm thinking at Parkwood court and Parkwood place, we have seniors who are probably very much on their smartphones or their uh, tablets mm -hmm. or iPads and they are staying in touch with their grandkids, great grandkids, all that stuff. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So, sorry, so just, well, sorry. Go, go ahead, Jackie. Sorry, I was just going to say technology. We're so lucky to have that right now through this. Yeah, well, I think about it from the standpoint of my kids, because if we didn't have tech, my, I'm pretty sure my kids would drive us nuts. But that's a whole other story <laughs> altogether, <laughs> right? Uh, speaking of kids, because you got kids too, Renee. I mean, uh, you, <laughs> you know where I'm coming from here. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and again, we're, we were talking about what people can do to um, – uh, to have that company, but organizations like Oak Bay Volunteer Services are perfect, of course, for Oak Bay residents, right? Yes, for Oak Bay residents. And then, of course, there are agencies, other volunteer agencies, Sandwich Volunteers, Beacon Volunteers out in Sydney, mm -hmm. um, even down in James Bay, there's Capital City Volunteers. So there are agencies for sure. Um, early on for us, we were really about saying to clients, connect with your neighbors, let them know you're there, connect with your family, let them know you're there. Because we, of course, were concerned we may not be able to be there for everybody. And we might have to really focus on those who wouldn't have necessarily a connection. So, um, so I'm thankful for that. But I also know for me, I mean, we're in a very lucky space right now where you know, we can get out in, in the summer sun, we can get out in the fresh air, which is so great for mental health. And so if people have the ability, capability to do that, I mean, I always impress upon people. And that's why for us, putting walks back into uh, our, our services was really important just to, you know, have that active aging as well and a bit of a walk, even if it's with a walker or supports, uh, doing that's also really crucial during well, the time if we can. And this is what happens when you live in the promised land. Um, anyways, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we've come to an end today. Fantastic having all of you guys. Uh, Ann Duggan, a seniors advocate. We have Kathy Aegis from Parkwood Place. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Parkwood Place. Jackie McAfee from Parkwood Court. And also Renee uh, Lorme Gilbranson from Oak Bay Volunteer Services. Thank you all for joining us. Members of the Victoria Senior Business Network. Uh, and for the rest of our listeners, we'll be here for you this time next week. Bye. Thanks, Jenny. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.